Jesse Livermore is one of the most famous stock traders of all time. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you the five things I learned from Jesse Livermore's rules of trading and how you can use Jesse Livermore's trading rules in your own trading. A quick Google search on the most famous and successful stock traders of all time and you'll see Jesse Livermore's name appearing frequently. In fact, if you were to ask professional traders to name some of the people that have had an influence on their trading, you notice that Jesse Livermore's name will come out often. Jesse Livermore is perhaps most well known for the 1929 stock market crash. During the 1929 stock market crash, otherwise known as the Great Depression, Jesse Livermore made a staggering $100 million profit shorting the market. To give this some context, the $100 million profit that Jesse Livermore made during the 1929 stock market crash is roughly equivalent to $1.5 billion in today's money. So even in the midst of one of the worst recessions in history, Jesse Livermore managed to make a huge fortune from it. So how did Jesse Livermore manage to make a $100 million profit while most other investors and traders were losing money at that time? Fortunately for us, Jesse Livermore left behind some of his trading rules. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you Jesse Livermore's 5 trading rules. Alright, let's take a look at Jesse Livermore's first rule of trading. The first trading rule is top-down trading. So what is top-down trading? Jesse Livermore believed that as traders in the stock market, we want to trade with the trend of the market, the industry or sector, and a sister stock. So we want to trade with the trend, or in Jesse Livermore's own words, trade with the line of least resistance. Trading with the trend of the market means that we want to trade in alignment with the US stock market or the US stock market index. In this case, it might be the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones. And if we are taking a look at a Hong Kong stock, we want to trade with the Hang Seng Index. And if we are taking a look at Chinese companies, then we want to trade in the direction of the Shanghai Composite Index. The second thing is to trade with the sector and industry group. What's the difference between a sector and an industry? So a sector is a larger segment of the economy. So for example, your consumer cyclical, your financial, your healthcare, and your technology are all different sectors in the economy. And for industry, we are taking a look at a more specific group of companies. Examples of industries are airlines, biotechnology, and consumer electronics. And the third thing that Jesse Livermore took a look at for his top-down trading is the sister stock. A sister stock is a stock that is in the same group, be it in the same industry or in the same sector as the stock that we are taking a look at. Let's take a look at an example of how we can use the top-down trading. So say the stock that we are taking a look at is the Bank of America stock. The first thing that we want to take a look at for top-down trading is the market. Since Bank of America is listed in the US, for the market, we want to take a look at the US stock market index, in this case, the S&P 500. The second thing that we want to take a look at is the sector or the industry group. Bank of America is in the financial sector, so we'll take a look at the ETF which tracks the financial sector. And the next thing is to take a look at the sister stock. So a sister stock to Bank of America can be JP Morgan. Now that we have the charts for the market, the group, and the sister stock. The next thing that we want to do is to put these charts together and analyze them at the same time. And this is how it will look like using the top-down trading method. On the top left, we have the price chart for the US stock market. And on the top right, we have the chart for the sector or the group. And on the bottom left, we have the sister stock. And finally, at the bottom right, we have the stock itself, which in this case is the Bank of America stock. So this is an example of Jesse Livermore's top-down trading and how he analyzes and studies his trades before making them. The second Jesse Livermore rules of trading is to trade the current leaders and only focus on the strongest companies out there. So why trade the current leaders? Because the current leaders are usually the best performing. And by focusing only on current leaders, we are able to keep the stocks on our watch list small and manageable. Focusing only on the current leaders might seem common sense, but sometimes common sense is not common practice. There are investors and traders out there who pride themselves on being the best bargain hunter in town. So what they'll do in the stock market is to look for the best bargain or for the most beaten down stock that they believe is poised to recover. Rather than focusing on slightly more expensive stocks whose price have already appreciated a fair bit and who are the current leaders who are leading the market. And Jesse Livermore had this to say, If you cannot make money out of the leading active issues, you are not going to make money out of the stock market. So Jesse Livermore's second rule of trading is to focus on the current leaders of the stock market. His third rule of trading is to buy at new highs and sell short at new lows. This might sound counterintuitive for some, and it is because it is a contrarian point of view. The media has drummed into us into buying stocks at a discount and at their new lows, and then selling the stock when the stock has made a new high. In other words, buy low, sell high. But Livermore noticed that some stocks upon making new highs or new lows can continue in the direction for a long period of time. What this means is that Jesse Livermore noticed that some stocks upon making new lows can continue to make newer lows. 
and that some stocks when making new highs can continue to make new highs for a period of time. This price chart of Tesla illustrates this point. Back in December 2019, Tesla made a new high at around $75. Some investors and traders upon seeing the new highs that Tesla is making might have sold their positions in Tesla or even worse, start shorting Tesla stock back then. And you can see that upon making new highs back in December 2019, Tesla continued to make new highs moving forward. In fact, as of this filming of this video, Tesla has increased by more than 7 folds since its new high back in December 2019. And this is why Jesse Livermore's third rule of trading is to buy at new highs and sell at new lows. Jesse Livermore's fourth trading rule is to only average up in long positions and average down in short positions. Jesse Livermore noticed that many traders become involuntary investors. These traders started out their long positions as trades. But after prices start to move against their long positions and start to fall, rather than exiting their positions, these traders start to become investors by averaging down on their long positions. While averaging down on long positions can be an investment strategy, the issue here is that some participants in the stock market tend to mix the two together. And when they mix the two together, more often than not they end up on losing positions. Being a stock market trader, Jesse Livermore believed only in averaging up for his long positions and only averaging down on his short positions. Why should stock traders only average up in their long positions? As human beings, our nature is to always get the best deals. And isn't paying a lower and cheaper price for the same stock a good thing and a good deal? No, it's not. Because the fact that there are profits on our long positions are hard evidence that our judgment is correct. So we only want to add more positions when we are correct and reduce our positions when we are wrong. And that is why if we are long on a trade, we only want to average up. And if we are short on a trade, we only want to average down. The fifth rule of trading by Jesse Livermore is risk management. And Jesse Livermore has this to say, don't lose money. A speculator without cash is like a store owner with no inventory. Cash is your inventory, your lifeline, your best friend. Without cash, you're out of business. So in trading, cash is like your lifeblood. Without it, you're gone. And that is why it is crucial to protect your cash with good risk management. Jesse Livermore would sell his positions when price move against him by a certain percentage. And very importantly, Jesse Livermore never asked for the reason. The fact that the stock moved against him was reason enough for him to get out of his positions. The last point is essential. Many times when the price of a stock moves against us, we tend to want to look for reasons as to why the stock moved against us, rather than immediately sell our positions. And by the time we figure out the reason, if we do at all, the small loss has turned to a big loss and placed a huge dent on our capital. And that is why Jesse Livermore had this trading rule of selling when price moved against him by a certain percentage. Those are the five things that I learned from Jesse Livermore's rules of trading and many of which which he used to achieve the things that he achieved in his lifetime. If you have learned something from this video, like this video because it will really help the channel grow and allow me to produce more content such as this. And if you are new to this channel, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on future videos on investing, trading and the stock market. I'll see you in those other videos to your financial success.